Hi, I'm Dave Epstein, and welcome to this edition of Growing Wisdom. I'm here today with Dan Jaffe at New England Wildflower Society's Garden in the Woods. Today we're going to talk about edible plants for the shade. So Dan, you've taken me to a part of the garden where we've got a pretty nice Lindera growing, and I guess we're going to go over a bunch of plants that folks can grow that may have lost some sunshine or just don't have a lot of sunshine in their garden. That's correct. Uh, what we're trying to do here is, for the most part, people tend to think they have to grow their food in lots of sun. Kind of standard is, you know, six to eight hours for tomatoes, peppers, that sort of stuff. Um, what I'd like to do is offer people the ability to grow food when they don't have that amount of sun, and spice bush here is a great option. All right, Dan, so you've got this big spice bush, and I'm not sure, how, how am I going to eat this thing? <laughs> This is one of my favorite plants. You can eat this in a couple different ways, but I think the best thing to do is to treat it as a tea plant. It's more of a drinking plant than an actual eating plant. Um, in the early season, you can cut the small stems off this, simply steep it in some hot water, and you've got a really tasty tea. Um, this is something you can also easily do any time of the year and dry these stems out to use for later periods of time. Um, the early leaves are edible, the flowers are perfectly edible, and historically, the berries were used on this during Revolutionary War times as a substitute for allspice. They're very tasty, but they're very strong. Definitely to be used as a spice instead of a fresh eaten berry. So Dan, I have a lot of this in my garden Solomon seal, right? Correct. And I did not realize you can eat this? Yeah, this, this is another great native plant. Um, and this is like a lot of the other native edibles and really any edible, there's, there's a season to eat this plant. This is one to eat in the early season. In fact, at this point, I wouldn't recommend eating this plant. Um, but if you catch in the early season as it's just coming up, when the leaves are still kind of curled around the tops, you can cut off those stems. Um, they're perfectly edible raw. Most people like to saute them or boil them. They've got a flavor that's similar to asparagus, although with a, a distinctly sweet aftertaste to them. Um, the rhizome on this is also edible, although to be honest, the difference between edible and eatable is the difference there. Um, the stems, on the other hand, are excellent. And we should tell people the berries are not edible, they're actually poisonous. That's correct. The berries are uh, great for the wildlife, but ones for us humans to stay away from. So Dan, these are weird little fruits, and I was not really aware that you could eat these. Yeah, this is the American hazelnut. This is uh, actually quite similar to the hazelnut you'll find in the supermarket, although that's a European species. And these weird little fruits, if you were to crack them open, especially once they ripen up, you'd see a very familiar hazelnut shape in there. Um, the flavor is very similar to the, the more common European. It's a little bit sweeter, although I think the reason the European really caught on as the, the choice crop is that that one is significantly larger. Um, despite the fact that this is smaller though, it is a fabulous edible. Um, it grows perfectly fine in the full sun, but it's also very shade tolerant. You can kind of plant this one anywhere. You know, Dan, I just put some of these in a spot that only gets a little bit of morning sun, and uh, they're doing great. We've got the low bush blueberry, right? Yes, this is the low bush blueberry, um, and this is really one of my favorite plants. What, what I really love about this plant is you can plant this in absolute full sun. You could also plant it in absolute full shade. This thing will really grow anywhere. And like the hazelnut we just talked about, you will get more berries in the sun than you will in the shade. But when it comes down to it, this is one of the few native plants that can actually grow under a hemlock tree. You know, every spring I look forward to finding these guys in the supermarket. Love sauteing them up. They're delicious and, of course, fiddleheads. Yes, the fiddleheads are probably one of the better known wild edible species, and this is, this is just a great fern really any time of the year, but especially in the early season. Um, as it's called the fiddlehead, you don't want to eat this one now. This is something to catch in the early season when it's still furled up, and you really want to make sure you're eating the right fern. There's a lot of health concerns moving around the fiddlehead fern, and I think the vast majority of them come from misidentification in the first place. So we'll give you a link to the safe fiddlehead ferns. Be careful if you're Googling the word fiddlehead fern because a lot of things that show up really are not edible and uh, we don't want you to get sick. This is one of those plants that we were introduced to back when our settlers first came to this country. We brought all these European crops with us that we planted and they weren't going to be ready till the summertime. And the Native Americans introduced us to the ramps and uh, since then we started having ramp festivals. So how, how would you eat these? These are, you can eat these in a number of different ways. Um, a lot of people do like to cut them up raw, throw them into a salad. They've got a pretty sharp onion flavor in that manner. I think the best thing to do with these is a quick saute in a pan, maybe a little bit of butter and garlic. They cook very, very quickly and they taste almost as if they're caramelizing. They get very sweet once you cook them. Dan, this has been great. Any other plants that you think uh, folks should know about? Oh, I mean, there's hundreds of them out there, but a couple more of my favorites would be uh, the false Solomon seal with a very tasty berry, uh, mayapple, which produces a fruit that is also very tasty, almost melon-like, um, and the trout lily with an edible rhizome that is just a great early season snack. 
And of course, we are at New England Wildflower Society, and you folks at Garden in the Woods are all about preservation. So we want to talk about the fact that folks shouldn't. Yes, we're, we're talking about wild edibles. We're not necessarily talking about wild foraging. Um, these plants are all very easy to cultivate in your shade garden. There's no need to go out into the wild. Um, for especially a plant like the wild leeks that we spoke about, that plant is indeed rare and endangered in some states, and you really don't want to be wild harvesting this. These plants can be grown in your garden just fine, and then you don't have to make a far trip to get them. So for those of you who think that you need six to eight hours of sunshine to grow things you can eat, there's plenty of native edibles that do perfectly well in the shade. For Growing Wisdom, I'm Dave Epstein.